to wait another two and a half hours actually before getting a flight to Dublin and uh, that's at the end of the terminal we are here at 33 it's at 31 um, so flying to Dublin that takes us about two hours and then I hope to arrive at around four ish in the afternoon Touchdown in Dublin, Ireland. It's a beautiful day here in Dublin, and I'm looking forward to meet uh, the guys at uh, Adore tomorrow. And I have the pleasure to travel with my wife today, so that's an extra bonus point today. Now that was a long journey, 12 hours of travel from Clermont Ferrand, actually from the city where we live, a little village there where we live, to, to Bray over here, not a little village. Now this, this is the view. But of course it's not about the view here in Bray, it's about Druid Software. And that's a company I'm going to visit tomorrow to understand the proposition of Druid into the public safety and critical communications uh, arena. And now once we're getting this transition from narrowband to broadband, uh, LTE and 5G, it's kind of important to make sure that you have a good proposition that matches exactly the expectations of your customer. So Druid software is able to do that. And tomorrow we're gonna to talk with a few of the people of Druid about their proposition to the public safety and critical communications industry. But for now, first, let's enjoy Bray a little bit. working day it's a uh, actually cloudy day and it's not such a beautiful weather as yesterday you know that's a fact of life good in about a half an hour I'm visiting the company Druid Software I'm trying to find out today what they do to make mission critical LTE or 5G uh, mission critical so Today I will learn more about Druid's customers. You know, who are they? You know, how do they view Druid software? How necessary is it to use that software? And what's the view of Druid on mission critical LTE? Lots of questions, a lot of stuff. Let's take a walk. Shouldn't take long actually before I am at the office. It's probably just around the corner. Um, no. Is it here? No. So it should be here. I think I'm lost. I think it is here. Or there. No. I'm, I'm, I might be lost actually, so let me let me check. This is actually not the office. Oh there! And to be honest, I'm completely lost. And this, this is actually a very small area, so probably says something about me. Um, so Druid Sulfur, it's here. Druid Sulfur, well, actually Druid. So now I need to get in. Law Center, um, there's Druid. Druid Sulfur, level number two. So I think I'm in the right place right here, gentlemen. 
Hey, hey, hey. I'm, you, my I'm very good. Thank you very much for you. Hi there. Uh, Catch you all. Nice to meet you. I haven't seen Raymond around actually. Uh, no, he's, he's coming with by, he? by, by, by taxi. Maybe yes. grab Carmack. Can you see Carmack there? Uh, good to see you. Nice Hi, to very well. You. Thank you very well. How was the, how was the travel? Well, this morning, sweaty. <laughs> it's good to be here. Well, this is, this is where everything happens, right? Yeah, exactly. This is it. This is an open, open office space, right? Yeah. Does that work? Because everybody is. I see a lot of interaction, right? Yeah. That, that's important. That's pretty much what we're going for, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's not by accident. Uh, we started off upstairs, but then as the company grew, um, this has become the main floor. Yes. And when you have, you know, a bunch of people working on software, it makes sense to have this open space where, you know, instead of sending messages or emails, you yeah. literally just nip across and grab a hold of someone. Yeah, and even I, I heard that even the CEO, CTO are on the same level, right? Yeah, exactly. That's Everybody's it. on the same level here. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Is that a different department than that department over there? Or? Yeah, so we don't have the floor split up necessarily by uh, by department. You know, we have yes. our engineering teams that are split up into different sprint teams, yes. and we have our sales teams, marketing support teams. They're, they're all within here. Um, we have somewhat of a hot, hot desk thing yes. going, yes. where people aren't necessarily in the same spot all the time. That's not super enforceable because you know some people are working with hardware and that kind of thing. So yes. it doesn't make sense to up and move all your hardware all the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, all of the, all of Druid's um, engineers and, and sales and, and all the teams are kind of just dotted throughout these areas. Yeah. yeah. So down here is where the, you know the actual kind of work is done. Yeah. Upstairs is a space for conferences, you meeting customers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's take a look. look. And there's even more people here. All right. That's a lot of conference going on here as well, right? Hi there. Hi. Right, good to see you. Yes. Yeah. Very. Okay. So we going up? Yeah. Upstairs. Let's go up. Since COVID, we've definitely become more of a hybrid company. Yes. Um, but you know, you still need a good office environment because you can do so much, you know, online and that kind of thing. But you probably do your best work when you're in the office. So yes. part of the benefit of having an office set up like that means that when you're in the office, it's perfect for problem solving and all those kind of things, you know. And this is where presentations are being done? This is where some of the I presentations guess. are being done. The demos today are actually just across in, in, the, in the theater over there. That the, the demoing is a big, big part of our culture as well. Hopefully, as you'll see later on, that for us, it's about building real working stuff. So yes. it's not just about necessarily meeting deadlines and that kind of thing. There comes a time and place where you have to hook it up to a radio or you, you test a feature, you test something, and it actually has to work. So yeah. we need the, the right kind of spaces to do that. All right, we're going now to the Mermaid where they have this presentation going on with the customers and all of those people from Druid, from all parts of the world. So it's just on the opposite side of the Druid building. And the Mermaid is kind of a, I think it's kind of a community building, something like that. It's kind of theater, yes. All right, CEO Liam Kenny. Yes. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be part of your customer day and, mm. and, 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 and seeing all of those demos. Mm. Um, this is your brainchild, right? Yeah, sure. For a long time. A long time, yeah. We've developed this platform for the last 15 years. So, yeah, it's coming all the way from 2G up to 5G. So, you know, we've been working, I guess, in uh, mission critical, business critical environments for, for a very long time. When we look at this proposition, this Ramis proposition, mm. uh, you know, can you explain in, in, in just simple words why end users in the mission critical communications environment need to use that vehicle for the next step in critical communications, 4G, 5G? Yeah, because the Druid uh, Ramus platform, we really harness cellular for mission critical environments and business critical environments. So again, we're very flexible. All of the network functions of cellular can be transmitted into an edge environment where even if they're disconnected from cloud, they can still uh, operate autonomously. So I, I guess we put a lot of focus on uh, resilience and autonomy in our edge networks. Um, we do this with REST APIs all the way from 2G up to 5G. So again, that's really why our platform really harnesses cellular for business critical and mission critical uh, services at the edge with no requirement for transmission networks back to the cloud. And that makes it a lot simpler for those end users, right? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you can still manage. So in other words, we're not against cloud. Obviously, we're, we, we're very, we work very much with the cloud and we can be deployed in the cloud. But what we're talking about is when cloud gets disconnected in those environments where it's really important that service continues, uh, that's where we're really strong. So you just cannot rely on an end-to-end -end core network from A to Z? Yeah, you can, you can configure an end-to-end -end core network from A to Z. You, you, you can, yeah, but 
what what I'm talking about, I guess, is when you have a problem with communications between your different elements in your network. If you deploy a Ramus platform at the edge near your radios, near your users that are serving some mission critical uh, incident, uh, everything works locally in that case. So I suppose that's a little bit different from what cellular does normally. The Ramus platform specializes in that. I know in Tetra and in other mission critical technologies, this is kind of normal stuff, but cellular hasn't been so focused on this and the Ramus platform really is designed to make that easy for cellular also. Okay, so what's the next step for your company for Druid Software? Yeah, I think right now it's just very interesting times in terms of growth. So again, we're we're doing lots of different things. I think the evolution of mission critical networks from Tetra obviously doesn't go too fast. So again, we're there for the handover while you know cellular will be there probably beside Tetra Networks for a certain period of time. Um, and then, you know, we're there for that handover to take place. Uh, we're integrating with partners who also specialize in Tetra, so you can have both uh, running side by side. And then again, we, we're targeting the applications that mission critical users uh, are really interested in uh, and delivering them on the cellular side as well. And I suppose, yeah, five, 10 years time, it may be all cellular from the for mission critical. So here are actually technical people talking to technical people about the solutions they just have shown, uh, actually demoed. Coming from the critical communications industry, actually coming from the radio communications industry, um, it, 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 it's kind of difficult to understand exactly what the Ramis solution is all about. One thing I do know is that these guys have been working on this solution already since the last 15 years. They have seen 2G coming, they have seen 3G coming, they have seen 4G coming right now. Uh, and every time there was a possibility to integrate the Dromus Remus into the technology, uh, although only until 4G and 5G it, it makes sense right now and it works it works out well. That's why you see so many familiar names on the screens working with Druid already. Lots of technical stuff. That's not really my piece of cake, but I'm hanging in there. Why do I need Ramis? You know, what is so special about the software that 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 is necessary for mission critical communications? Yep. Because I, I, you know, I can imagine that there are some people out there thinking, you know, I could just can have a network slice of one of those uh, network operators and use that for mission critical communications with a few of, uh, handheld devices and a nice app. That's it. But that's not true, right? No, no. I think you have to you have to in your design have to have the bell, have minimize your single point of failures. So again, having a core, having having a single slice, having a dam, you know, even with five nines, in most mission critical environments, that's not even that's not even sufficient. Um, you've got to ensure that you can prioritize the traffic. You've got to ensure that there's no congestion on the links. You've got to make sure that the applications whose whose data is critical to get through um, gets through first. Um, so it's that prioritization of data, it's that managing the radio networks, it's that being able to ensure that quality of service on the, the limitations that are imp or the bottleneck that is imposed by the radio network that we manage that correctly. So again, it's not, it's not so much trying to give general service to the masses, it's all about specific applications and specific prioritization of that data based on the application. Okay, so that would mean that, for example, a public network operator uses a slice for public safety and that slice is embedded with Ramus software, right? That's possible, yep. that's also possible. Again, as we mentioned, Ramus as standalone, on-prem at the edge of the network is, is is a, is a viable architecture and something that we do quite often. Um, embedding and working with the operators in an IOPS model, a survivability model, is another facet of the platform. Okay, so what about the MCX standard, you know, the 3GGP standard? I guess with that, you're following that standard very closely and you're adapting to the standard. I yes, think that's a yes. must, right? Exactly, yes. So, so what drives RAIM is in the platform, again, we have a, a golden rule of trying to keep it simple. So we try to abstract the complexities of the 3GPP standards, um, but at the same time, 
implementing them. So we fully implement them, but again, abstract it so it's easy for the it's easy for the end user, the enterprise user, the IT manager, and the first the blue light responders, you know, the defense application. Just making sure it's simple, easy to use, but at the same time, we are we have to deliver on the interfaces and the standards as defined by the as defined by 3GPP. Is it not possible for an operator to to do this themselves? Well, I, th I think it, again, I'd, I'd imagine that most operators would say yes. But again, from our perspective, um, we think the, the fact that we have what's much simpler to manage, what's very, very application aware. So we're very aware of the applications, we're very aware of the, of the nature of the data that's flowing through the network, being able to prioritize that data. We have that much, much more focused view on mission career and on the enterprise, as opposed to just trying to deliver a consumer network. That was, it. That was my... Through it today, actually today, lots of information about 4G, 5G, about core networks, about Ramis. And uh, I'm looking forward to be one of the guys at the whole team, one of the other upcoming events. So that was a lot of stuff. That's what I found out during my visit. Um, a lot of information, a lot of information about private LTE. Um, well, actually, basically down the line, in what I found out in Ray, is that Druid Software leverages cellular technology for mission-critical applications, offering flexibility in transitioning network functions to edge environments. Um, but I'm not sure if you understand that exactly what I'm saying. So, well, that's a fully loaded sentence, and I understand. So what does that exactly mean? Well. It actually means that you can deploy a private cellular network with all of your network functions running at the network edge. This is because there is a Ramis platform has been built specifically for private mission critical deployments. Even if disconnected from the cloud, Ramis can operate independently, emphasizing resilience and autonomy in edge networks. So by using Ramis REST APIs, you can support cellular services at the edge without relying on cloud connectivity. I think that is a very, very important part. So when we look at the strength of the company and the strength actually of Ramis, I can say that the strength is laying in providing reliable industry-grade core networks for 4G and 5G mission-critical deployments. That's basically what it's all about. So with Ramis, it's easy for enterprises to manage their networks and it makes private cellular more affordable. You don't need proprietary or specialized hardware to run Ramis. Well, that's good. It runs pretty much on any hardware. Any commercial off-the-shelf server is all you need to deploy and make cellular cost effective.